stirring is stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Hey there, sodium free bean dip. What? Take this. What do you have? This? I need you to make that spin. Stepper mutter. Yes. What for? I need to stir my coffee. Look, I need you to make this cool, quick, and educational. Well, I mean, you can't just apply DC current to this thing. You have to have like a driver and a, a controller to. Um... <sighs> Fine. All right. Well, I have a driver off of Amazon, and a, we could use a PSOC controller. So. I guess that's not too hard, and as long as I'm doing it, might as well take you guys along. So, uh, let's do it. Okay, so I've set up everything we need to demonstrate controlling a stepper motor using an off-the-shelf uh, motor driver and a Cypress PSOC microcontroller. And so all we're taking from the microcontroller is two signals into the driver, which is a step in direction. Obviously direction picks whether you're going forwards or backwards. And then uh, every time you pulse the step signal, you're going one step further. Uh, so then there's a couple of uh, connections that you have to set up with the driver, but the uh, driver itself is gonna tell you uh, what those connections need to be. So I'm not gonna really go over too much of that. There will be four wires in most cases coming off of the driver uh, that go into the stepper motor. Um, sometimes that's different, but uh, I don't think you'll have to deal with that. So uh, in this case, I've already got everything programmed. So I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. And then we can uh, jump into the software side of things. Easy. All right, let's go. All right, so this is gonna be a sort of minimum practical stepper motor control. Uh, motion control is a rabbit hole unto itself and I don't plan on taking a huge dive into that right now. However, we should be able to move point to point with an acceleration and deceleration here. And as usual, uh, there's going to be a link to the GitHub where you can get this code. But let's get started on the schematic. First, I'm gonna take the button and the LED on the dev board and throw those in there. Uh, we'll use those for testing. The important thing, however, will be the pins for step and direction. These will be how we tell the motor driver what to do. I'm going to add some debounce to the button pin because you should always do that. And I'm also going to add a not gate to this pin uh, because it's inverted logic, meaning that uh, the button pin will be high until someone presses the button, at which point it'll go low. Then I'll attach an interrupt that we will reference in the code later. Now I'm going to add two control registers. Uh, this allows us to control uh, a bit of this hardware from the code. Uh, you could do this with one control register, and typically you would, but it's a little easier here to describe what's going on using two, so that's what we'll do. One of these is going to be an enable pin that will make a bit more sense later. Uh, and then the other one is actually going to select the direction that uh, we want the motor to go into. With that, it's time to get into the heart of things. We're going to use a 32-bit counter to subdivide a clock, which will give us a 50% duty cycle pulse with a frequency defined by the code. So set the counter to UDB and then 32-bit, and this will be an up counter. In this case, we'll set the enable to hardware only. You could just control it through the code using software, uh, but here we wanna use the LED to uh, give us a test output. So we'll set it to hardware and then connect it up to the LED. And that is going to be the basis of our step signal. Then we will make a one megahertz clock and plug that into count. The block itself needs a clock, so we'll just plug that into the bus clock. And then I'm going to attach an interrupt to the output as well as the uh, step pin. Now we'll add one more 32-bit counter, and this time we'll set it to count input and direction, which is very convenient because it's going to keep track of exactly where we are. We just need to route the hardware signals for our step and direction into it, and it is designed to keep track of that. Then we just route the uh, bus clock into that clock as well, and then the compare output is going to be true if we are where we want to be, which means that we can actually connect it to our enable signal 
to uh, turn it off if we're where we need to be. I'll also add an interrupt for motion complete here. We'll just call it done. That's everything for our hardware schematic, so we can move on to assigning pins. Uh, here you can see the pins we've used, and this is all for the uh, PSOC uh, 5.9 kit. Once you select the pins, you can uh, go up here and uh, hit generate application. That'll make up some of its auto-generated code here. Then we need to go to build settings and put an M right here. This allows us to uh, use the math libraries. The update move function will be called every time we take a step. This allows us to change the counter every time and uh, we'll use that to implement acceleration and deceleration. In order to actually conduct point to point movement with acceleration and deceleration, we need to create a sort of movement plan into the future. Uh, so what we do is use this start move function to store the current position and uh, the target position and then we can actually kind of plan out uh, how long to accelerate, how long to move, and how long to decelerate. This is actually called a trapezoid move because if you plotted it, it would form a trapezoid. So to move to a new location, you can simply call this start move function with the target position. With those functions in place, it's time to set up the interrupts. So first we'll just add the button and that'll allow us to uh, just uh, create a little test move. If you're going to adapt this to uh, something else, then you'd want to replace this with uh, whatever code it is that you want to create a movement. Then we'll add the on step interrupt, which will uh, trigger that update move function as we talked about earlier. And then the interrupt for that done signal that we created last in the schematic. Then we need to attach our interrupt functions to the interrupts by calling the particular interrupts start ex function. These functions are generated by the generate application button, so if you haven't done that yet, you will need to do that before you can reference them here. The nice thing about doing this in the PSOC is that it's almost entirely in the hardware, so that frees up your core to do a bunch of other processing or whatever else you needed to do. Uh, but this is everything for this demo, so it should be ready to go. Alrighty, Albino Armadillo, what you got for me? Oh, this, um, yeah, I got this all set up. All you have to do is um, press and hold that button. As long as you got to help. Just, just got to press it. That's yeah. all. Yeah, basically. Yeah, all right. Well, the, that's all I need. You know what? what? what you what know what? You you're, you're done here. No. Goodbye. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that, that, yeah, it's surprisingly. Yeah. What? You can work while you're recording. <laughs> oh, you were recording? What? Are we recording?